Okay, John Canny, how are you? Today I'm going to give you a bit of an insight into the Ineos Grenadier, this new four-wheel drive vehicle that I've uh, ordered. Uh, now, this is not a technical review of that vehicle. I'm no mechanical expert or anything like that, and it's just an overview. And I hope it gives you a, an interest, a bit of interest and an idea of what it's about, and maybe one day you'll think of one of these yourself. Um, so, look, at the end of this video, I've got a, a really interesting uh, clip on the vehicle I've actually ordered. So if you could subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate that because that, that helps uh, my videos be seen. That basically encourages me to, uh, to make more. Let's get on with it. Let's have a look at this car now, and here it is. So this thing came about because a guy named Jim Ratcliffe, who's a billionaire from Great Britain, who uh, the founder of Ineos, which is a massive company or chemical company, uh, and a four-wheel drive enthusiast. So he got a bit disappointed, like a lot of people did, when uh, the uh, Defender, the old Defender, was replaced by the new Land Rover Defender, and people thought that it was no longer uh, a truly rugged, reliable outdoor vehicle. Well, was it ever reliable? <laughs> Who knows? It certainly has now become a luxury SUV. Even though I believe it's very capable off-road, uh, I think uh, it's not suitable for uh, the, the rigours of the Australian outback or South Africa or even, even the United States. So Jim Sat uh, Ratcliffe decided that, so being a billionaire with unlimited wealth, he decided to develop a new vehicle. And uh, the idea was to make a purpose-built four-wheel drive off-road vehicle. Uh, which he did. And so for about five years he's been doing that and they're now coming to fruition. So there's not many vehicles like this around. I mean, the, the uh, fair income four wheel drivers uh, who want to do the tough stuff t tend to go for uh, Toyota 70s and things like that. And of course there's the Land Rover 200, which is now the 300, which is a, supposedly a very capable vehicle, but is becoming more high tech as well. And of course, we're talking about a four year wait list on those. So perhaps there is a space for this Grenadier. And I'm a bit of an old fashioned boy in as much as that, uh, you know, I find all these bells and whistles and everything that they've got in cars now to be a bit of a distraction. And even with my Ford Ranger that I've always loved, the, thing, the only things that have gone wrong have been those little technical bells and whistles going off or not operating correctly. So this Ineos Grenadier has been built without those. You've still got to use a key to get into this and start the, start the car, for example. Um, it doesn't have things like electric seats. Uh, it, it doesn't have self-parking. Uh, it doesn't have those things. It, it has a, you know, a normal handbrake, uh, not electronic handbrake. And the idea of all of this is to keep it simple and keep it reliable. So uh, that's what it's about. So here it is, you know, it's a beautiful vehicle, I think. And of course, it looks very much like the old, uh, the shape of the old uh, Defender. So let's look at what this car, how it's built. So uh, Ineos decided, not being car manufacturers before, that uh, rather than reinvent the wheel, they would go out and find what they could to be the best components. So what are those components? Well, it's got a BMW engine in it, for example. Uh, a six cylinder and you can have diesel or petrol. I've chosen diesel. It's the uh, uh, B57 engine for those who know what that means. <laughs> it doesn't mean a lot to me but it's a six cylinder turbo engine with 185 kilowatts and uh, 550 newton meters of torque. Now it's been retuned to suit a four wheel drive so it's got lots of torque low down uh, but apparently a very good and very reliable engine. We also have a ZF transmission. Now Again, you know, if you're not a technical person, what the hell is a ZF uh, transmission? And it's the same question I asked. But a ZF transmission is apparently one of the best you can get. And it's used by there's, uh, Alfa Romeo, Aston Martins have them, BMWs use ZFs, Rolls-Royce use a ZF gearbox uh, or transmission, and uh, so do Ford and Chevrolet. So no doubt about them, they're up there with, uh, if not the best transmission you can get. 
has Bembo brakes fitted, uh, which are a well-known uh, brake system. Uh, and it, but the interesting thing about this is it's solid axles too. It hasn't got independent suspension or anything like that. So, solid axles, front and rear. The solid axle is much better uh, for that purpose, and that's why it's used. The axles are uh, coming from uh, Carraro, who make heavy-duty uh, machinery and tractors around the world, so they know what they're doing with the uh, with the axles. It uh, sits on a full box section ladder frame, which is which is almost old school again, but it's it's about being solid and reliable. Now we've got permanent four-wheel drive, and we have got uh, uh, a central diff lock. With a little gear lever on it <laughs> to change from uh, from high to low none of this electronic stuff there you're never going to get uh, stuck with that and we've got front and rear diff locks which are an option but of course uh, um, i've selected them and i assume most people would so going to in the interior of the car it's a really interesting inter interior you know it's kind of based around an air airline interior i think with a lot of panels and switches that you can see here that are up on the top now the, one of the great things about this is that they've got all the four-wheel drive stuff up the top and in this back panel as you can see there uh, there's a whole lot of switches there that are pre-wired to, to six different points around the car so if you want to add accessories such as I don't know uh, driving lights winches outdoor lights they're already wired up you don't have to be digging through your car uh, so they're already wired back to that panel you can select a rubber floor instead of carpet which I have also done uh, the interior is basically uh, water repellent and the floor can be hosed out, it's got drain holes in it and I think that's a great idea because, I don't know, I put rubber mats all over my carpet as soon as I get a car anyway. It comes with Apple CarPlay, it's, it's, it's got, um, as I said, parking sensors, anti-theft stuff. So, look, this is a modern car, it, you know, it, it's, it's a modern car with all the things that we, we deserve and need in modern cars but without all the electronics. So, you know, it's got electric windows and you can get some seated heats and all those sorts of things, but it, it won't self-park and it doesn't have air suspension and, uh, you know, it doesn't have all of those sorts of things. The interior is designed with uh, you know, big knobs as well as a, a high-tech screen, so everything's on the screen as well, so that's all good. Now, it's a heavy beast. Um, it weighs uh, 3,550 kilograms, which is, which is pretty hefty. It's got a roof dynamic load of 150 kilos which is which is really good really high and uh, a static load of 450 so no no worries putting uh, rooftop tents and things up there or, or if that's your desire can tow three and a half ton uh, and has a, a gross combined weight of 7,000 kilos so uh, really good as far as that it only has a 90 litre fuel tank so you might be have to try and be looking for aftermarket fuel tanks or something like that because 90 litres is not a lot for Australia but 90 litres is what comes with a Ford Ranger so you know I don't know fuel consumption well they're quoting 10.1 to 11.7 whatever that means so you know it's not frugal but it's a big heavy vehicle uh, that will go anywhere I hope <laughs> and I assume because the interesting thing about this car is no one's really driven it yet and it's I'm ordering it unseen undriven so, you know, hey, let's take a few risks in life. What do they cost? Well, this is another interesting point. It's, uh, you've got three versions. You can get the utility standard base wagon. So, back and that's at $84,500. And then they have two uh, other additions. They call a trail master and a field master. Now, the trail master is basically the, the four wheel drive fitted out version in other words it comes with a diff locks and a uh, snorkel or raised air intake and uh, things like that and then there's a uh, fuel master version which is uh, a bit more on the yeah oh, I don't know refined I don't know carpets leather seats those sorts of things if you want them so you can get those as well now those two models come at uh, ninety five thousand four hundred ninety five dollars so there's on-road costs that come after that but what has happened uh, in recent times that makes people like me very happy is that Ineos applied to the taxation part department for an exemption from the luxury car tax. You know that luxury car tax that we've got of 33% over about 70,000, anything over about $70,000 and you're paying an extra 33%? 
that's so we can protect our car industry, I believe that's why it was brought in. Well, we don't have a car industry. Anyway, that aside, uh, INEOS applied for an exemption for this vehicle saying it's not a luxury car. And they were successful. So that saves about $12,000 off the price of these things, which is uh, really appreciated. It's not the only vehicle to have that. The uh, Toyota 70s, uh, 70 Series, I believe, have that exemption as well. So you're still looking at around at least $100,000 plus for this vehicle, fitted up in any manner that you might like it. So how does that compare? Well, if you were able to get a Land Cruiser 300, I think the the uh, off-road version, uh, whatever they call it, or the, the fitted out version for off-roading, uh, which is the GF or something like that, I think. But it's it's uh, it's basic price is 127,000 to start. So look, this this I don't think is an expensive car. I think it's about in the middle of the range, and I think that's where they've positioned it. I would expect that it's probably going to increase in price once they get them out there on the market and people start to say. They're fabulous, which is what I'm hoping I'll be able to do. Yeah, I've got a video here of the vehicle that I've ordered. It's, it's uh, as I said earlier, it's um, something uh, pretty pretty special that they, they put together for each of the people who've ordered a vehicle. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a gimmick, I suppose, but it gives you a look at what I've got. One question I do have that I'd like uh, some feedback on, a factory fitted winch, five grand, a red winch. Seems extraordinarily expensive to me, but uh, there is some discussion that they upgrade the suspension and everything else with it, so that's probably why it costs five grand. So what do you think? Let me know whether I should go for the winch as well. Oh, that's gonna really hurt. <laughs>